Hey guys, today we're moving on to attributes of quadratics in vertex form. So yesterday we talked about standard form, which is what we did when we were factoring, and standard form looked like ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, so we were given equations like that and we were able to find all kinds of things. Today I'm going to give you it in um, vertex form. So vertex form is going to look like y equals x minus h or plus h plus k is what it's going to look like. And again, this, this sign might change to a plus, it might be a minus, um, but that's the form. So again, review from what we've been doing, if a is greater than zero, aka a is positive, that means your graph is going to be opening upward. And that means it has a minimum because our vertex is at the lowest point. Okay. If A is negative, aka it's less than zero, the graph is going to open downward. That means that our vertex is now at the highest point, so this graph is going to have a maximum. Okay, I'll review. Um, then if we look at this graph, we have our y-intercept. Again, that's where it crosses the y-axis. So right here is our y-intercept. We have our vertex. Um, this time, it's, since it's opening upward, we've got a low point, so this would be a minimum. If we're upside down, it would be a maximum. Um, then straight through the middle of that vertex, we have something called the axis of symmetry. And that is x equals a number. And again, we get that number from the vertex. We also have x-intercepts. That's where it crosses the x-axis. In this case, we have two x-intercepts. We can have no x-intercepts. We can have one, or we can have two. That is not how you spell intercepts. Intercepts. There we go. That's better. OK, so there's from a graph. Um, with vertex form, we're going to be able to find the vertex, the y-intercept, axis symmetry, domain, range, max, and min. So just um, not the zero, so where it crosses the x-axis. So first off, how do we find the vertex? Well, remember our form was y equals x plus or minus h plus k plus or minus k, I guess. Your vertex is h, k. So you're looking at this and this to get those. Um, an important thing to remember is the sign for h is always going to switch. Is opposite. So like in here, since this one's positive, it would be a negative. If it were a negative, it would be a positive. K is going to stay the same. Whatever K is, it's just going to go there. But the sign for H will switch again. So if it was like plus 6, you would do negative 6. If it were minus 6, you would do positive 6. And we'll do some examples. It'll make more sense in a minute. How do we find the axis of symmetry? That's going to be um, X equals whatever this H value is, right? Max or a min. Well, you're still looking at the sign in front. So since it's a positive, it would be um, facing up. Would mean it would be a minimum. Facing down would mean it would be a maximum. So that's how you can tell. Um, how do we find the range? Well, range is going to be y is either greater than or equal to whatever your minimum value is, or y is less than or equal to whatever your maximum value is. Domain is always...
negative infinity to positive infinity. Excuse me, or all real numbers. How do we find standard form? Standard form, you're going to um, solve the equation. So we're going to be using solve equation. And you will need to use either FOIL or BOX method in order to solve. And again, we will get that in a second. And then your C term um, you get from from standard form. And if you remember that from yesterday, oops, standard form was y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So again, we would be looking at that c term once we have solved our vertex form. All right, a lot of steps. Let's apply this into some real problems. So first off, if you look, this here in front is positive. So right away, I know that my graph is going to be facing upward. So we know that much so far. Um, first, let's do the vertex. So remember, these numbers here are your h and your k. So this is h, this is k. Remember, you want to do opposite for h. So since it's a negative 4, I'm going to make it positive, And then I'm keeping the sign for the k. It's positive 5, so I'm keeping it positive 5. Axis of symmetry, I'm just using this right here. And it's x equals whatever that vertex is. I know I've got a minimum because it's facing up at y equals 5. Range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 5, again, because it's facing upward, right? So everything's got to be greater than that lowest point. Domain is always all real numbers. Standard form. Okay, here's the new part. So now I'm going to take this equation and I've got to solve it. So first thing I need to do is multiply this out. So this is saying x minus 4 times x minus 4, which we know how to do either FOIL or BOX. So if you were going to do BOX method, we'd have x minus 4, x minus 4. And if we were to start multiplying out, we'd have x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. And negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So then when I go to combine my like terms, I'm left with, zoom out a little bit, x squared, negative 4 plus negative 4, same signs we add, so negative 8x plus 16. Now, um, common error here is I still have this positive 5. I still have to add that on. So then if I continue to add like terms, Positive 16 plus positive 5, I've got x squared minus 8x, 16 plus 5 is 21. So that would be our standard form in the ax squared plus bx plus c. So you're having to use box method and add on whatever that k value is at the very end. So nothing new, y'all know how to do that, just um, an extra little step in here. 8x plus 21. So then to get my y-intercept, remember I'm looking at the standard form. I'm looking at this c value here. I'm going over 0 on my y because I'm on the y-axis, right? And then up 21. And there it is. That's how you find everything. Pretty neat, eh? So let's do another one. Again, I'm going to start with the vertex. So I'm going to look at what's in the parentheses over here. Here's my h. Here's my k. h sign changes. So it was a positive 1. Now it's going to be a negative 1. This is a negative 9. I keep it negative 9. So the only the one in the parentheses changes signs. There's my vertex. Axis of symmetry. I'm just using this x value here, so x equals negative 1. I look here, 
this is a positive, right? So I know that my graph is facing upward. So this is gonna be a minimum value. My vertex is the lowest point on my graph at y equals negative nine. The range, since it's a minimum, is gonna be y has to be greater than or equal to the negative nine. Domain is always, 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 all real numbers. Standard form, here's where I have to solve. So again, this part right here is saying x plus one times x plus one, right? So I'm gonna do box method for this. x one, x one. So when I start solving this, I've got x times x is x squared. X times one is just X. X times one is just X. One times one is just one. Combine my like terms. So now I've got X squared plus two X's plus one. And again, do not forget about that last term down here, that K, negative nine. So minus nine, I combine like terms. And I am left with X squared plus two X minus eight is my standard form. So x squared plus 2x minus 8. Again, for the y-intercept, I'm looking at that c term, so negative 8. I'm going over 0 on my x-axis, and I'm going down negative 8 for my intercept. Okay, next one. Okay, notice now there is a number in front. That's okay, you can have numbers in front, it's gonna change um, either making the graph stretch or compress, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later, um, but that is totally fine. So the two is actually gonna make it longer and skinnier. So if we look at this, it's a positive, so I know it's facing upward again. My vertex is still staying the same, okay? Vertex is gonna be this H and this K out here. So again, the H is gonna change. It was a negative eight, so now it's gonna be a positive eight. K stays at positive one. Axis of symmetry is gonna be using this eight here, so X equals eight. Max or min, it's a minimum because it's facing upward, right, at Y equals one. Range, since it's a minimum, everything has to be greater than or equal to that one. Domain is always, always, always all real numbers. Standard form, I've gotta factor all this out. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing as before, except we have one more little step in there. So first do this, do your box method first. The x minus eight times x minus eight. And I don't know if y'all remember the little trick you don't have to do box method every time since it's um, squaring it. If you notice like up above, since it's x minus four, all you're doing is adding negative four and negative four to get negative eight, and then multiplying negative four and negative four to get positive 16. So if you didn't wanna do box method every time, you can just say negative eight plus negative eight would be negative 16x, and then negative eight times negative eight would be positive 64. So um, that was our special trick thing. Again, if you didn't remember that, that's okay. You can still do box method and you can do x squared minus eight x minus eight x, 64, combine like terms, and you'll end up getting what we just said. Okay, now the step before we have to do everything, remember, I still have a two here, and I still have a plus one. So the two's out in front, multiplying all of this, and I still have this plus one. First thing you have to do is distribute this two to everything inside the parentheses. Okay, so I've got two x squared minus 32 x plus 64 times two, what is that, 128? I better double check myself, y'all. Didn't want to mess all up. Plus one, combine my like terms. 
So 2x squared minus 32x plus 129 would be the standard form. Again, I'm looking for the y-intercept, so I'm looking at this last term here, the c term. So I'm going over 0 on my x, and I'm going up 129 on my y. So just that extra little step of distributing had to be done when you have that extra number out in front. Um, but everything else would be the same. Okay, let's try this one. This one has a negative, right? And I want to write this a little bit different because we're used to having, um, like, in parentheses, x minus h and then minus k or x plus h or whatever. And there's not anything there. So if we were to rewrite this, it would really be y equals negative one half x. What could I add or subtract to not change anything? Zero, right? Squared minus four. So now you have your h and your k. And again, um, zero can't be positive or negative, so vertex is just zero, and then k is a negative four. Um, and if we look this time before we go any farther, notice this is a negative outside of here, so now I've got a parabola that's facing downward. Okay, axis of symmetry. I'm looking at x equals this number here, which is zero. Max or min, this time it is a max because it's facing downward at y equals negative four. Range is going to be y has to be less than or equal to this time because it is a max and facing downward. Range is always all real numbers. Now to get standard form, I'm going to use that first um, Where's my color? My, the first one up here, so I'm going to use this. So I've got x squared. Well, it's really just y equals negative one-half x squared minus 4. That would be standard form, and that's as simplified as it gets. So y equals negative one-half x squared minus 4. And again, I'm looking at this c term for the y-intercept. So it's over... 0, down, negative 4. And that's it. Now, again, like I showed you with standard form, you can also plug these into Desmos um, and look at what the graph's doing, which I highly encourage. So if I plug in my first one, which was y equals um, x minus 4 squared plus 5, I can look and see exactly what's happening. I can look, and my vertex is at positive 4, 5 which is what we said, right? Vertex is at positive 4, 5. Um, axis of symmetry is at that x equals 4. Um, and you can see everything that's happening if you want to graph it and do it that way. You can also look at your y-intercept. Is that 0, 21, which we said? 0, 21. So that is totally an option as well, is graphing it and seeing what's happening. But that's vertex form, y'all. Um, pretty cool. It gives you literally the vertex. That's why it's called vertex form. It gives you that H, gives you that K. Uh, most important thing to remember is to change sign here. Better than that, not too bad. Bye, y'all.